because she's way more beyond a speaker, is Susie Q. Smith. She's a community activist. She's been writing and performing poetry for over a decade. She runs a poetry slam, Cafe Nuba in Denver, Colorado. And I think it's the third Friday of the month, I believe. Last Friday of the month. Um, I went last night and it's really great entertainment if you all haven't been. Um, she's been actively involved with many local and national nonprofit organizations working on social change issues, including civil rights, victims assistance, and HIV AIDS prevention and awareness. So here's Susie Q. Thank you all so much for coming out today. Um, and thank you, Claire, for inviting me and for organizing us all. I do appreciate it. Um, I'm just going to do a couple of quick pieces. Um, and the first one, in light of, you know, it's, uh, we're approaching Day de los Muertos, and there are many, many ancestors that came before us. And this is a time where many cultures take time to honor them. And um, I would like to begin by honoring someone whose shoulders I stand upon, um, Huey P. Newton. So this piece is for him. Dear Huey, how your spirit haunts me. Your unrest turns in my belly and I am reduced to fingers and thumbs. I clap my hands, stomp my feet, shout and sing, giving voice to every element and accent of we. Recovering from revolutionary suicide attempts, I haven't forgotten you, Huey. I would have brought you soup. I won't set roses upon your grave. My work involves shovels, I dig. My work involves hammers, I build. My work involves torches, I burn. My tongue salty with your memory, I miss you tremendously. Your spirit still speaks, reaching far beyond the mask of Afro picks and balled up fists, reaching for handfuls of sky as if dreams can be manipulated by fingers. You're still trapped inside my psyche like an open wound, clotted blood and ears from hemorrhages of compromise, comfortable as bloody pillowcases. You can get used to anything. I'd sing for you, Huey, as if your spirit only waited for me to wear you. I bear your burden as a truth teller taking up arms. You call me from my resting place to serve my loved one's compassion. In carefully woven stews, in handmade bowls, we remember community this way. We remember you this way. We honor us this way. We carry picks and pistols and prayers in our pockets, stretch fingers toward the sky and close fists once we can feel you. The struggle to embrace ourselves enough to overcome is still a struggle. I haven't forgotten you, Huey. I pour chicken noodle libations in your honor while I respect my lips, my tongue, my voice enough to use them. I see your shadow dance in the flicker of every candle. I see your afro in spring trees, and I'm sorry that they hated you, Huey. When you couldn't perform miracles in anything more than the appearance of work, sacrifice, discipline, changes, no magic trick, and they let you die for this. As stamping out a torch, laying down a hammer, burying a shovel, and shooting up instead of out, and I wonder if it's a lost cause, Huey. Loving my community so unconditionally when the streets digest the blood and bones of slain soldiers and pave over their remains like so many unmarked graves. Tell me, Huey, was it worth the sacrifice? Your blood still flows through the gutters over broken bottles of dreams and messages forgotten like you. We don't talk about you at school, Huey. We've been lulled by dropping bodies so deep in the trance we don't remember what hope is. Only the ignorant pray the rest of us get used to it as even bad dreams are less alarming than waking to this. And who are we to free the unwilling? I see many children especially, and um, I can't talk about the war without using extremely strong language. It's impossible. So um, if you must guard ears, now is the time. This is a piece, the title is The Weather Underground. Some of you are probably familiar. If you're not, Google it. Um. <laughs> I want to burn down Lockheed Martin. We never forget who we're working for. That's their slogan. That's really their slogan. And I'm not saying that I want to kill the president, just that I'd like to destroy his resources. Because sometimes I feel responsible for all these innocent dead out of all my
my crazy exes. I've never asked one for the president's head, and I'm persuasive. All this killing is blasphemy because it happens in my name, and I don't think our leader understands how sacred that is. Maybe I should tell him while I'm burning down his house, tagging S U Z I motherfucking Q. Personally participating in getting your karma to you, and I don't forget who I'm working for either. This isn't over between us. I saw a mother climb into a grave behind her son. They had to fight to pull her out, and I understand her. And you tell me she's my enemy. You tell me they're the enemy. And after all your blasphemy, maybe they can't tell the difference between you and me. So this time, your misuse of words is not funny. This time, you cover us in blood, and I don't think it's the saving kind. And next time, I don't think you should be any more protected than I am. Protected like I could go to jail for this poem. Like I'm an enemy combatant or something. Like I'm inciting a riot just because I'm not down for burning babies. And maybe... to be free. Like all of those Iraqis I heard that were saving, I like the idea of that free to speak. And my spirit's so much bigger than your war machine, so maybe I'm the one that's supposed to stop you. I feel responsible for every lost life and every lost limb. Like I haven't done my duty as an American because I haven't lit any fires yet. Like my peaceful descent goes on allowing it. Like my vote wouldn't change things even if you counted it. And sometimes being sad doesn't feel like enough. This time you can't scare me like God does because I'm pretty sure sure he's not on your side and neither am I. I want to bring an end to this. I hope that doesn't make me a terrorist, but I already feel like a murderer.